It's time for bookkeeping, beer, and BS. You looked at hard, but you still started down the corporate path yeah. because was it? Did you go down that path because your parents were like, "Hey, Daniel, you should go down yeah. this path." For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then, how, um, how long down that path until you're like, actually, I think I don't like this as much as. It's a good question. Maybe like four, four years. Yeah. Five years, maybe. Yeah. I realized like. There was a point that I realized I was trading time for money. Okay. And uh, I didn't want to do that. And I felt like the only way to not do that, I had a toilet seat. A toilet seat? It's distracting. Um, I didn't see that. I, I, just, I have a list of questions. I'm ready. As a podcast host, I'm here to ask questions. And I just got some questions for that guy. Maybe we'll interview him tomorrow. Yeah, we need to. <laughs> like, but, um, can I, like, can I borrow it? <laughs> <laughs> that was the first question I came to mind. But yeah, uh, when I realized like the only way for me to have more time with my family, I was traveling a lot. My first, my daughter was being born, first child. And I was just like, how can I like not trade time for money? Yeah. And then I started like getting the wheel spinning and like, I got to go back to like owning a business. Did you, and, and when that thought hit was like, hey, I'm going to go join my parents. Or was it, I'm going to get into the same industry they're in because I know that industry? Or was it just generically at a higher level, like, I got to get into small business? I knew I had to start it. Yeah, I knew I wanted to start a small business. I had seen the the success my parents had in, like, carpet cleaning. And it was something I knew. I didn't know how to do, really start anything else. Yeah. So that was the space that made the most logical sense for my first business, right? Okay. And so that's where I started. Um, it just made sense. Like, yeah. hey, I know everything about kind of back, this. Backbone yeah. ready to go. Yeah, exactly. How long were you running that before you started at St. Jim? Um, well, my parents sold their carpet cleaning business and they moved out to Tennessee. Theirs was in San Diego. They moved to Tennessee oh, okay. to be with us. Yeah. And they retired for like six months. Yeah. And then I convinced yeah. them we should start a business. Hey, I got an idea. Exactly. So they did a lot of the running. How much it. carpet is in San Diego? I feel like San Diego would be like a lot of tile and we did a lot of tile cleaning. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. So um yeah, and we had that for seven years. We just sold it. So eight years maybe. Did you sell it because you were like out of love with it? Did you sell it because it hit a certain point and you're like, when it hits this point, we're gonna sell it, or did you sell it because you're like my I have so many retired. things going on and this is just ends up being a yeah, distraction. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It was just something I wasn't going to scale. Yep. It, yeah. It would became a distraction from the other things that I was doing. Yep. yep. You know, in the meantime, I had been at Sin Gym for four years. I had been, my brother and I started a concrete coatings company um, that was much larger. So uh, yeah, the carbon cleaning was just kind of like got the training wheels, you know? Yep. Yep. Uh, Crispin on YouTube is asking, can I ask a business question? And my answer to that would be, hell yeah. Like that's literally what we're doing here yeah. is, uh, ask talk, questions, talking business, throw your questions in, throw your comments in. I like, uh, that's what makes the world go around, man. That's what makes yeah. the world go around. Um, so yeah, throw it in Crispin. We'll, we'll definitely hit it. Um, so what, at what point? Like you were doing the carpet cleaning thing with the fam. And then at what point did Send Gym become a thing for you? So if you guys know about Mike Dalkey, business partner with both Dan and I, um, he got involved in Send Gym and I was kind of consulting a little bit with that business on the side on Send Gym, helping okay. Mike. And after like three or four months, he's like, hey, I think you should just run this thing. And so I told my wife like, you know, I think this is a really good opportunity for me to go like full time because I was still consulting even when I had my carpet cleaning business. Oh, yeah. And uh, this was the opportunity to go like full time. When, when you say into, you were still consulting, were you consulting? Like corporate America. Yeah, you were still the corporate. You wasn't yeah. like consulting as Daniel Dixon consultant. No. It was consulting as like you post MBA. Billable hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're working that. in that, that world. Yeah. The, so, the sexy world for a year or two. Wearing the suit and tie. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Flying somewhere every damn week. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. So it seemed like a good opportunity. You know, it was a big pay cut, but it was one of those things where I was like, it's what I'm passionate about. It was with people that I liked and I felt like we should, uh, we should try it. Mm -hmm. You know, corporate America, you could always go back. 
You could. So, they take you back in a second. They take me Think back. about your resume now. If you went back to corporate America, like you think they'd hire me. I don't. So, so Kurt Kempton was joking on stage today. Like we're not hireable. I think the corporate people need people like us. I think so. Right. I think, I think if, especially if it was a place that you already had a relationship, which yeah. like I've kept a lot of my relationships up. If I wanted to go back, I think I'd go back at quite a bit higher level. Cause you can't, I've been, I was running a business with a hundred employees. Yeah. Like, how are you going to, where are they going to find that internally? I feel like right? I'd be so disruptive, you know, if I went back. I think so. But there's a certain level in the corporation where they like hire like that, that in, right? Yeah. When the level, when the level you and I were at when they, when we left is not a place. Actually, that was like coaching that I got was like, Hey, you're super disruptive. And, and all actually like literally this was some coaching I got. I was in a coaching program, which was like, it was part of like a fast track program that, that Cargill had. And so I'm like doing this coaching part of it was 360 feedback. And so my coach, like it was actually fine. I could tell who gave me the feedback it was, it was anonymous feedback. But if it was coming from like one of our vice presidents, they would like, Hey, you <clears throat> love your energy, love your ideas, love how fast you get stuff done. You add a ton of value. Um, would love it if you didn't challenge everything that everybody did, right? All of my peers would be like, oh my God, I love working with you. You say everything that needs to be said that nobody else is willing to say, right? And so the people above you would feel challenged because I was, I'd like call out our company president. Yeah. I'd, I'd tell them straight up, it's bullshit. Like you're just trying to get a bigger bonus. You're not trying to like run this company for three years from now. You're trying to get a bigger bonus this quarter and you're going to take another job next quarter. Like that's what's happening. Yeah. Like we can all see it. I'll, everybody else is afraid to tell it. You can fire me. I'll go do something else. I don't care. Like this is what's going on, and I call that shit out. <laughs> but 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 so, like I mean not like that. I, I'm embellishing, right? Yeah, I try to be respectful, but like peers would love it. People above it wouldn't, wouldn't always love the challenge, but you know some of them would. Some of them yeah. like the shake up. But I think if you went back now, they would appreciate. Like you would go into a role where they wanted that, right? Yeah. Where like like their corporations are stale. Right, they need that, so they are looking for that skill set in certain roles. Not every, not the roles we were in when we left. Yeah. Is like you're the consultant or you're the risk manager. Like yeah. you, here's your tasks, right? But at a leadership level, I think they, you would get in right away because they'd be like, yeah, we're looking for people that have run companies and led things, and we can't find it here because we're promoting from within to people that have never done this sort of thing. So if we go external, oh, you've run a bunch of companies and grown them by a hundred percent in two years. Yeah, we'd, yeah, we'd love to figure out how to grow 100% in two years, right? You know, yeah. it's like, and we're like, oh, yeah, I didn't think we did that good. But when you put it like that, it was all right. So I can do all right. Not saying you should go back. I'm not hey, what's up, business nerd? Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you learned a heck of a lot watching that episode. Do me a favor. Subscribe right down here. And if you really like what you saw, you got more goods right here. Check out this one or check out this one and do this. Go subscribe. Appreciate you. Work smarter. Work harder. Go earn yourself some pride. Catch you on the next one.